Ladies and gentlemen, um, do you really want to improve at chess? If I told you that I could give you a 100% foolproof method to get better, um, that will work for anyone up to probably 2000 and beyond, uh, would you believe me? Well, I think I have method, okay? Now, I'll tell you, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm gonna try it now, I'm gonna try it with you, I'm gonna do it live. Now, this video was gonna be called Freddy Won Scotch Nil, okay? Or something like that. But then I thought, okay, well I could just show you the game, you know, I, so I tried the F5, response to the Scotch opening, you know, Freddy Krueger repertoire, etc. And I won the game. Okay, so, so, so much for that. Um, and by the way, big shout out to uh, Christian690, who popped up in the chat saying, are you the chess boot camp guy or just another fan? I'm like, dude, it's me. <laughs> Check out my last video. You just played the Scotch and look, you know, anyway. Um, but yeah, good game, good opponent, very gracious. And, um, Anyway, what am I going to show you? Well, okay, bear with me, okay, because I'm going to show you the second part of a two-part method. You're like, what, hunty? Well, okay, I would like to show you the whole method, but I don't have time today. But if you just do what I'm going to do today, that's, that's no, you, you will improve. You will improve 100%, okay? So, I'm not going to play a game, okay? I'm going to take the game that I played with Christian this morning. It's a five-minute blitz game, and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. I've never done this before, okay? So, here's the game, right? Um, I'm going to click share. I'm going to click go on PGN, click in here, and copy the whole thing, right? Now, next step, I'm going to go to my study for black, for scotch, for Kruger Scott Revisited, all right? I'm gonna pull up my Lee Chess study. Now, here I have um, a, a nine chapters, right, for nine lines. And yeah, we've been through some of this. I think I might have added one or, one or two since I made the video, but anyway, this is the point. This, um, this list of chapters is my, is my theory, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new chapter, okay? Um, game number one. Let's keep it simple. Black orientation. Uh, and here you have to remember to put in your PGN. I'm going to paste in my PGN. I'm going to click create chapter. There we go. Game number one. Um, score zero one. That means black wins. Okay. Spoiler alert. And uh, we are now going to work through this. Now, Hunty, I hear you say, what is the point? What is the point, dude? Yeah, what is the point? Okay, here's the point, dude. Name the film, pretty easy one. I quote it all the time. Anyway, um, imagine if you will, let me take you on a journey, okay? Picture a big piece of paper and picture a circle in the piece. In fact, I said bear with, right? Behold, piece of paper, right? Behold, circle. Now, all of this, this entire piece of paper, is known as the chess universe, okay? And this, this is the piece of the chess universe which we like to call shit you know, okay? And all this, if we color all this in black, all this dark stuff, right? This is all shit you don't know, okay? Shit you know, shit you don't know, okay? Got it? With me. Right now, the key point is this bit, right? It's this ring, okay? This is the edge. And as you grow in chess, you get better at some things, you get better at other things, you get better at end games, you get better at tactics, and the shit you know, the shit you're good at thing, expands, okay? But where does it grow from? It grows on the edge. So I've talked about this before. 
the stuff within here, like the stuff you've always known, the stuff you've known since you were, you know, since you started playing these basic things and basic principles and stuff, that's all in the middle of here, right? What, but for you to grow, right? You're not gonna grow by learning whatever this is and whatever that is, right? That's for super GMs. And this is for GMs and this is for IMs, this is for national masters and FIDE masters, and, you know, whatever, right? And Canada masters, right? But the point is, what you need to learn next in order to grow is the next steps along your journey and it's what is just outside of your ring of shit you know, right? So we, we, wanna, we wanna reach into the inner space of shit I don't know, okay? And learn what is it that I should know next if I was a bit better than I am that I'm not knowing, okay? So that's what we're gonna try and do now. We're gonna take this game and admittedly, it's a game that I won in 15 moves, right? Um, but we're going to an analyze it. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to play through, first of all, okay? And I'm going to... I, I haven't got Stockfish switched on. I'm going to play through the game. Um, in fact, can I turn on Stockfish without lines? Let me just check this. Multiple lines, zero. Okay, good. Right. So what we've got here is we've got the eval. So we've got the eval, we've got the eval bar on the right hand side here, um, but it's not telling me what the best moves are next. But it is telling me, it's giving me a hint of where the, um, the balance might change. Now, e4, e5, knight, f3, knight, c6, so far so good. We're still plus 0.3. That is white's natural advantage that he's born with, okay? The scotch. The computer says this is maybe not ideal, tiny, tiny little detriment for white. Uh, we don't need to worry about this. And then I know I play pawn to f5. Now, according to the fish, we've gone from plus 0.1 to plus 2.4. Now, this would be a blunder. I'm not going to mark it as a blunder um, because this is my theory. Now, I haven't actually looked at my theory on this guy. I haven't checked it out yet, but that's not the point. Okay, now, we have knight takes, okay? Knight takes e5, which is the second most common move and actually very winning for white, 58%, probably the best move for white, okay? Now, I have chapters on knight takes e5. And then what happens now? I think I remembered what to do next. Now, it's 2.3, okay? I think I remembered that the next move is knight f6, okay? And um, actually fe, it's saying is the most winning in the in the player database. But I play this move now, and it's gone from plus 2.3 to plus 2.8 now. So we can mark this, I, I need to scroll, okay? As dubious move, that's Lee Chess's word for inaccuracy. Okay, now, here we come to the point. I'm going to annotate my game, okay, um, according to what I learn, okay. So my first idea, so I click on the comment icon, right, why is that inaccurate? Okay. Well, I know it kind of wanted me to take there, right, so we could say, for example, both white's e-pawn and our f-pawn are um, undefended. So the engine wants us to take the material, right? Okay. Uh, so this is my this is my interpretation. So this is the line. This is the ring of the the edge of my knowledge right now. Okay. That's my guess. That's my best guess right now. It wanted me to take here, all right? Instead of this move, it wanted me to take here because it's free stuff, and we know the engine loves free stuff. This by the way, isn't playable because it hangs the knight. Okay, so I do this. Um, it's marked as inaccurate, um, and that's the reason. Now, what does white then play? Knight to c3 goes from 2.8 to 2.4. Okay, so maybe engine wanted uh, e takes f. Don't know. Okay, but it's not a massive difference, so we don't need to concern ourselves too much about that. I capture now, right? 
Oh, hang on. From 2.8 to 1.2. So actually, that's a mistake, according to, you know, I'd say, you know, just between like a, one pawn and two pawns is probably a mistake. Um, above two pawns, maybe a blunder. Um, but this, this was also then a mistake by black and why? This is the point. Why is it a mistake? And quite honestly, the longer that you spend on this process, the more you will get out of it, right? And this is very different to what many of us do, you know, many of us, you know, promiscuous blitz whores who play a blitz game and then go, oh yeah. Um, and you know, if you're feeling like really studious and really grown up, you might hit game report and go, well, where did I go wrong? And then it shows you where you went wrong. And you might even look at the, what moves should you have played? And then you go, oh yeah, new game. Oh, let's start again, right? Now, <clears throat> here's the point. And the name of this method, this is where I'm going to tell you the name of the method. The name of the method is the Gromit method. And I'll tell you for why, right? Um, we start, obviously, with a Pulp Fiction reference. You read the Bible, Greg? Yes! Oh, there's this passage I got memorized. Sort of fits this occasion. And the... the the passage that I've got memorized, if I remember correctly, I think comes from the book of Proverbs. And it's something like a fool repeats his old mistakes like a dog returns to its vomit. Okay? So Solomon on top form there. And um, so what does it mean? It means, well, if you keep doing the same stuff that you did wrong before, um, you're a fool. Right, and that because that's almost like the definition of a fool of or, or foolishness. And my point is this: that if you just keep hitting new game, new game, new game, new game, you are probably going to be making the same mistakes as you made in the previous few games and previous few games before that, and you're just going to keep making the same mistakes. Why? Because you are not edging the nudging the edge of your of your knowledge right um, into the darkness into the nebulous world of shit I don't know right you, we want to import we want to expand the light into and we want to illuminate the darkness of shit I don't know and make it shit I know okay with me so how do we get from the Old Testament to Gromit well I'll tell you so I kind of like I'm kind of a, a fan of um, like jokes and plays on words and stuff like that, and I like Cockney rhyming slang. So you know Cockney rhyming slang, you know well, I've put on a Simon Williams voice now. So you know Cockney rhyming slang is like traditionally your Cockney. So East End of London would say they wouldn't say stairs; they say oh apples and pears, right? Or they wouldn't say wife; they'd say the trouble and strife, or or the bread knife. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Plates of meat instead of feet, right? So your plates are your feet, yeah, right? Anyway, so, <clears throat> by the way, I think I've got an improvement on trouble and strife for wife. I think bag for life is a great one. You know what they give you in the supermarket and they say, when it wears out, you can get in, well, maybe it don't work, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, but the point is that my word, my Cockney rhyming slang term for vomit is Wallace and Gromit, okay? So... You know, I might say to my friend Nick, um, I had, had so much beer last night, I wanted to Wallace, yeah? And he would understand what I'm saying because it's our little language for, you know, Wallace and Gromit vomit, get it? Right, anyway, move on. So that's why it's Gromit, okay? It's a dog returning to its vomit. If you just go, I'm gonna play again, I'm gonna play again. It's like, you know, you're just doing the same old crap over and over, you're going to make the same mistakes over and over. Right. How many of us have repeated the same bad relationship pattern by choosing the same kind of horrible person that, that we didn't get on with before, but we keep going back to that same type, you know? I mean, men and women will know what I'm talking about, some of you out there. Anyway, so uh, that's where it comes from. Okay, so this is what we do. We don't want to return to our vomit. Okay, now back to the problem in hand, okay? 
It didn't like this move. Why didn't it like this move? Um, I mean, I could take it with a knight. I don't have to take it at all. I could play d6 and kick this knight, right? But then takes, pawn takes. Um, I'm not really clear. Obviously, I can't take this pawn. Uh, bishop b4 is a move, you know? Is it a generally good idea if you can pin the knight, you know, with development? Why not pin? Why not have a go at pinning? You know, it, it freezes the knight. It reduces your opponent's options, so maybe that's a good move. I don't know. So what well, here I'm going to go maybe... Um, so for the next move here, um, it says mistake, and we've noted it as a mistake. Uh, unclear. Maybe bishop b4, right? Now, sometimes it's not necessarily that the move that you played was particularly particularly bad although here it, it does say you know my position gets worse um, sometimes it's that there's a better move right but here it is saying we you know we drop down from uh, 1.2 to 2.3 in white's favor <clears throat> so from here is there a, a major liability well the knight can't come in the knight can't really take the pawn um, there's no queen check I don't know. So I'm going to leave that as unclear right now. And this is okay. If you genuinely can't figure it out, this is good. Because what we've just realized is that the reason why this is not the best move is in the dark. It's beyond the limit of the light that you throw. Okay. Now they come out here and it's gone from plus 2.3 to plus 3.4. So white's doing better now. So maybe... I should have done something to prevent this move. So white's now getting ready to castle, and they've also got a bishop looking down at f7. Okay. Uh, so I, I can write that down. You know, maybe I should have prevented bishop c4. Who knows? Now, so from 3.4 to plus 2.7, so this is a decent move. Okay. Um, so I'm happy with this move. So I could even mark this as good move, right? So one exclam on there. Because it comes with tempo. We're hitting the bishop. Now, I know this pattern. And the reason I know this pattern is because I'm so lazy and I play the same kinds of moves in lots of different openings. And I know, for example, even from the like Marcellus Wallace anti-Vienna, um, you've got a bishop and a knight. As long as I've got queen and knight looking at that square, I know I can push d5 with tempo. Now, sometimes there's an issue with this that we know from the Marcellus Wallace, but not right now. So anyway, this is good. Comes with tempo. Okay. Good move with tempo. And um, we've probably, it might be the best move. Okay. Anyway, bishop retreats and the eval has just gone from plus 2.7 to plus 0.5. Okay, so this is a mistake. This is a mistake from white. And why is it a mistake? And also, another really important question is, why am I analysing my opponent's moves? Well, I'll answer that question for you right now. I'm analysing my opponent's moves because if this is a mistake, right, and I come across this move, not even necessarily out of the scotch, it might come out of the Vienna or something else, right? But if I understand why this is a mistake... Leading on from that, I must therefore understand how black could capitalize on said mistake. And then I might be able to use that in future in my games. If I don't realize <coughs> why it's a mistake, I'll just, you know, push ahead regardless. And crack on using the same old patterns that I've always used. Anyway, so, question is, why? Why is it a mistake? I mean, okay, he could have come back here or here. Could have come to here with a pin, okay? So he's missed the pin, and he's really not done much with his bishop, okay? So, um, should have pinned on b5, right? Maybe. Um, I mean, if he'd taken here, I'd just take him. Then I, maybe the queen can come to h5, I don't know. 
But actually, if he took there, I've even got queen takes. No, I haven't, because knight takes queen, that's not working. Yeah. Possibility of bishop takes d5 with queen h5 check follow up? Question mark. We don't know. Anyway, my next. <coughs> excuse me. My next move. Plus point six, plus point seven. Bishop b4 looks like a good move. So I'm going to mark it as a good move, right? Because I want to rem remember it's a good move. And it's important to celebrate, celebrate the things that you do right and to recognize the things you do right. So now I've pinned a knight. So now this knight is no longer, right, attacking this pawn. Okay, so that's decent. I'm happy with that. And I'm getting ready to castle. Yeah? White's now castles, and it goes from plus one to plus point eight. That's okay. Which means there's probably a better move. You know, maybe... Maybe bishop g5 with pin better, you know. <clears throat> we don't know. And then we develop the bishop here. It goes 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Now, if it's, if it's within a 0.5 difference, <clears throat> according to Craig, he says, you know, in, when he analyzes his own games, so Craig's now 2100 rated uh, Chess Bootcamp Live coach. Look out, we've got a couple of videos coming out with Craig uh, very soon. If it's, if it's within plus, 0.5, yeah, plus or minus 0.5, ignore. You know, it's not worth really delving into. Um, so we, we've done this. I mean, you know, the bishop there is a bit numb um, and it's undefended as well. I mean, it's undefended where it is, but at least we are extra defending this pawn, which might mean that we release our queen, but we are also getting a piece off the mark and preparing to castle. All right. And now it's dropped down a little bit. <coughs> And now we've gone from plus eight to plus point three. Okay, so slightly inaccurate. Uh, White has now maybe opened up a line towards the king and attacking this pawn. Okay, so what would you play here? Uh, I'd like to get my queen out, I'd like to castle for sure. But the move that I play now is uh, e takes f3, and that's also slightly inaccurate. But it's within 0.5 of a pawn, so we're not going to stress about that, right? You know, we're here about, we want to, as my mate Phil says, first you've got to hose the, hose the mud off the car. Don't start polishing, right? We are in the hose, the mud hosing business right now. Queen takes here, and it goes from plus 0.5 to minus 0.4. So that is at least an inaccuracy or dubious move. Okay. So why is it? Well, he's put his queen on an open file, okay? So, inaccuracy, queen on open file, question mark. Um, rook takes better? Or simply knight takes? Or knight takes? Don't know, but we'll find out. Because what we're going to do afterwards, we're going to go through this again, and we're going to use the engine to try and understand, okay? So move 10 now, so we've gone from minus 0.4 to, to zero, zero. So we're balanced and this is, this is okay, this is fine. And the good thing about this move is we have now put the rook onto f8 and now we have a threat of a discovered attack against the queen. I could put my knight here defended by the bishop, could put my knight here defended by the pawn with an attack on the queen. Now, it has to be said that, let's say I move this, right? The queen does have, queen takes rook, Forcing queen takes queen, because king can't take because it would be in check from the rook, yeah? And then rook takes, and then rook takes. And that's actually an equal trade-off. But, on the plus side, we end up with a rook on the f-file. Really, you know, trapping this king in his corner. So, anyway, that moves all right. Bishop to e3, hang on there. It's gone from 0, 0 to minus 1.3, right? We're going to call that mistake. It's between one and two pawns worth... Why? Why is mistake? Why is mistake? He's defending this pawn, which was hitherto undefended. Maybe actually knight capturing here would have defended that pawn, right? So I might come back to this move, um, go back to my comment, 
or knight takes defending d4 as a thought. Uh, so what he's doing here is he's defending this pawn that is actually under under attack and not defended. Ha having said that, hang on, let's go back. Okay, perhaps a reason why this drops us from negative 0.4 to zero is um, not, we'll say not best, as d4 hangs. Okay, so what I've noticed there is I was thinking about something and I missed the fact that there's a hanging pawn. Okay, good. You know, this is wins. This is us winning. When you realize what you did wrong, you win, right? It doesn't make you worse. It makes you better. It makes you stronger, right? You shouldn't feel bad about it. You should feel good about it. This is the point. And now he's gone and defended the pawn because he realized that it was undefended. But that's not the best move. Hmm. Why? Why is black slightly better now? I don't know. Query. Okay. Why is black slightly better? Who knows? Now, so what do I do here? What am I thinking? Okay. I drop my bishop back from b4 to d5. I guess I'm thinking the bishop isn't very useful, okay? I'm trying to improve bish. Um, the computer doesn't like it. It says that's maybe a mistake, okay? Why is it a mistake? Why has it made my position worse? Hmm, I do not know. Okay, but what happens next is he takes this knight, okay, and that's just not good, All right? So white gives away his most annoying piece, All right? Clearly, um, it's that, so that's what, okay, let's say inaccuracy, okay, dubious move. Not great. He's also opened up my bishop, right, so I'm going to add that opens up black's DSB, yeah? So now I'm looking down h2, which is great. And I recapture the pawn, which is obviously a good move. Okay, great, good move. Happy days. And now we have, ooh! Right, rook f to e1. Hell, minus 7.9, guys. We have a word for that. It's a thunder blunder. That's a thunder blunder. Why? Why is it a thunder blunder? Well, we're going to learn why in a minute. And the next move for black is really the key move in the game. So, um, the move that I play in the game is... Now, keep an eye on this. It's now negative 8.4, right? I play knight to e4. And we drop from negative 8.4 to negative 1.7, right? So that, in turn, is a blunder as well. Now, the question is, why is it a blunder? Okay. Now, why do I consider this move? Well, it's a discovered attack against the queen. Now, an attack or a check or something has no value per se, right? If, for example it prompts your opponent to make a move that they wanted to make anyway that improves their position, then what was the point all along? You know, and that's just one possible scenario in thousands. Um, so I'm trying to attack the queen. I'm putting my knight on a defended square. I'm potentially attacking this knight. But as we've seen, if you've got a knight there, you take this knight and b takes. That's not better, because that's exactly what my opponent did here. Took from here, I recaptured with a b-pawn, and it said we are better. So there you go. So, you know, knight, I, I, I probably wouldn't have taken that knight, probably didn't want to take that knight, but my opponent has the opportunity to capture me, thereby splitting all my pawns. I've already got double pawns here. I would have an isolated e-pawn, I'd have double the nice isolated c-pawns. Yeah. Um, okay. Allows 
knight takes e4. Uh, then if d takes e4, black's pawns are separated. Yeah? I mean, it's, it's not the immediate knight takes, because, you know, I'd win the queen, but uh, this was not great. Now, the point is, as well, this minus 8.4 is not that my position is winning, necessarily. My position is potentially winning if I spot the winning um, progression from this point. And this was not the best move. Okay. Now, I happen to know what the best move is, because I had a quick look at the game review you know, on the tablet after I'd finished the game. Um, if you want to pause right now and see if you can figure out what the best move is, and it's not a million miles away from you know what, what I actually played, right? But anyway, so but this is the thing. What am I thinking? This is the question. What am I thinking about going here? But we'll re we'll return to this. Don't worry. Okay. So I play this. Computer goes well. You just blew something. You know we, we don't know what I blew. Anyway, so they now play queen back to d1, which is a a mega thunder blunder, cluster blunder, right? Um, and the eval saying mate in nine. If I see a good continuation, right? Point is, why is this um, such a bad move? Well, you know, what's what's defending? You know, g and h pawns, right? I've got these these mega bishops, right? Yeah, this one's kind of bouncing off the side, but this one's hitting h two. The queen's ready to come in now to some, you know, one of these squares. Um, the knight is hovering with intent, and that queen has just, you know, just run away, just waved the white flag, dropped her gun, and pelted, right? And that's not that's not the way to win a game. You know, maybe no, that wouldn't have worked because I've got two attackers on it. I could just just took it with a rook. Um, there's probably better squares for the queen. I'm thinking maybe queen e two better. You know, qe two. Better? Who knows? We shall find out. Okay, and now queen to h4. Queen to h4 and now it's mate in eight. So queen to h4, clearly good move, happy with that. Um, why we are threatening mate. Okay. Mate on h2. Now, if you guys have ever got hold of a copy of Chernev's, Irving Chernev's Logical Chess Move, exp move by Move, um, you will understand what we are doing here because that takes classic games played, you know, hundred years ago typically, and um, and walks you through all the thinking behind every single move, and it's a really really good way to learn. But this is master level players, right? Um, what we're doing now is we're doing the same thing, but with my level or your level, okay? Um, but the the level of insight that you can get is arguably more valuable when you do this with your games than you do it with Chernev's classic games, right? Those games are great to inspire you, but it's like it's almost like it's shining a light way down the road, right? Because you're not a chess master. I'm assuming you're not a chess master, right? Shining a light down there looking, saying, look how interesting it is over here, but you're not there yet. I'm not there yet. We've got to carry on taking steps, and to do that, we've got to carry on illuminating the path in front of us step by step. EK okay. now. So this is good. We're we're threatening mate. Um, it's you know I was thinking maybe it's going to force this move, um, or, but also H three is possible. Uh, what they do now, hail, is capture on here. Clearly a mega thunder blunder. Um, because now we have mate and more. Okay, and the game is over. Black wins. The rook covers this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so far so good. This is all fine, right? Now, what we do, I'm going back to the beginning, and now I'm going to put on, let's say there's two multiple, two lines, okay? So now we have lines. Duh, 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 duh. This is a given. We're not arguing about this. This is what we play, okay? Now, <clears throat> best moves for white, knight takes e5, which is what's played, 
and knight c3, which is what wasn't played. Okay, knight takes c5. Okay, I'm going to say, you know, good move. Um, is it the most common move? Yeah, second most common move. Good move. I'd say best move, second most common. Right, excellent. Now, from here, the best moves are fe, okay, and then knight takes e5, right? The most common moves played are knight takes e5, knight f6, and then fe, okay? I played knight f6, and that's not great. <clears throat> and the point is, um, according to the machine, take the damn stuff, okay? Now, my guess was, hang on, these two pawns are undefended, so the engine wants us to take the material. Correct. Take the damn stuff, right? It's free, okay? So, that's what I should have done. That's why it was inaccurate, okay? And you can go into it in, in more depth if you want to, you know, um, but we don't have to right now. Because time is pushing on. They play this move, okay? Maybe engine wanted EF. No, engine wanted. No, engine says knight takes c6. Better. That's interesting, okay? Knight takes c6, but then EF. Yeah, uh, v uh, yeah, but only slightly. All right, anyway, so that's fine. Now I take here, okay? And slight inaccuracy. Best move was bishop b4, okay? So I take the pawn, okay? Unclear, maybe bishop b4, yes. Pins knight, knight, and prepares to castle. Now, by the way, this study is online and it's public. So you can come along and you can then learn from this game. And there's a, this is the point, okay? They do this, and that's, you know, inaccurate, okay? What should they have done? Bishop c4. Hmm. Bishop c4 is the best move, followed by knight g4. They played bishop c4, and the computer didn't like it. Go figure. Okay, so it was the best move. Um, maybe I should pre have prevented bishop c4. Well, let's go back. Here. Um, no. No, it's not saying I should have prevented bishop c4. No, it's just that uh, knight b4 was more useful. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> Morning. Okay, so we move on. And now, so from here, it's saying queen e7 was slightly better than d5. Hmm. Good move with tempo. Queen e7, even better, though. Now, why? From this position, why? Queen e7. I mean, that's a really weird-looking move. Um... It, for a time, it, surely it doesn't prevent that. Queen e7, bishop f4 was played. Okay, let's just have a look at this. So now, I, what I can do is I can break this out into a variation. Okay. Um, so queen e7, but then what if this? And king d8. Now the knight has to defend this, but then I can kick the knight. A bit precarious, maybe. Queen e7, best move here would have been bishop f4. Followed by d6, hitting the knight. I 
I know I struggle. I struggle to see why that is a better move. Okay, so I'm going to ignore it for now and carry on because it's probably too deep into the darkness for me to appreciate right now. Okay, if I can't understand it with a little hint, right? Am I going to understand it? Right? Is it the next step along my road? Maybe not. Okay, but anyway, this is a thoroughly decent move. The difference is two two to two eight or whatever. Um, yeah, two, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter. It's not a huge difference. Okay, so next we have this. And why is that bad? Because it allows bishop to b4. Okay, but what should he have played? Should have played knight takes d5. Really? Knight takes d Oh! Oh! Hmm. Now, I do believe that we talked about this. Okay. So, after this, I do that. Okay. Um, but their best move here was not to save the bishop. Their best move was to sack the knight. Okay. And let's play it. You know, we can add this. You know. And I'm going to say... This is what black, uh, both players missed, really. And it's a, it's a significant threat. It's plus 3.3, .3, okay? Um, if I recapture, a knight takes d5. Well, I have to take one of the knights. But neither move is ideal. So here, then queen h5 check. I have to push g6, yeah? Otherwise, it's mate in four, apparently. And then knight takes g6, okay. Very familiar pattern, right? H takes, queen takes the check, um, or queen, you know, queen can take the rook as well. This is a nasty position. So here's the point. What did I miss? What did I miss here? Okay. If here, notice that the first defender. Okay, so danger. If White plays knight takes d5, right, with a spare attacker. First defender is the knight on f6, but knight, but that knight has to defend against queen, uh, queen h5, check. All right, okay, so this is the point. You know, if I'm going to play this repertoire of moves involving the loss of Freddy, you know, very sad, okay, always got to be aware of this. And again, this is another kind of pattern that comes out the uh, the Marcellus Wallace in, against the Vienna, right? This idea that this knight's doing a very important job of keeping this queen out. And it's not just this, it's in the Rosso, it's in the uh, the Janish, okay? But anyway, so, so they missed it. All right, anyway, so they go back because they missed the opportunity. I do this, which is a good move, okay? Uh, best move here, bishop b4. Yep, best move. Well done, hunty, right? And there we go. Uh, they now do castles, which was okay. Um, actually says, yeah, castles is best. That's fine. Uh, maybe bishop g5 with the pin was better. No, no, not really, you know? Not really. Okay. So you can see now what I'm doing is I'm layering. I'm layering my my learning about this game. It's all from one piddly little five minute blitzscape. Really cool. And I know the video is banging on guys. Uh, uh, but hey, interesting. Interestingly, this position has been found before. This exact position has been played before. One time on the database. Um, and what white played here is pawn to f4. Curious, right? So the best moves here for white are the bishop pin, okay, and bishop a4, pinning this knight. Right, fair enough. Okay. He plays pawn f3, which is me. It's okay. So it's saying what I should do now is castle. 
Um, second move is, is e takes f3. I take play e takes f3, you know, castles was slightly better, but hey. Um, <clears throat> actually, this position has also been reached before, weirdly. Uh, queen takes, and this was poor. Uh, the best move here is rook takes and then knight takes. Okay. Yep, yep. So I, I said, inaccuracy, <clears throat> leaving the queen on the open file, rook takes better or knight takes? Yes, both were better. Right? I'm having a conversation with myself here. Right? Okay, now castles. Best move, knight takes d4. Right, well, we saw that. Too late. Not best as d4. Hangs. Yeah. Okay. And now, and now, best moves for white are knight takes c6. Eh, this. Huh. Yeah. Which I think does come, doesn't it? <coughs> and queen e3 just getting out of the potential discovery. They don't do either of those. They play the bishop out here. That's not fantastic because it enables knight takes e5 or bishop takes c3. Fish is now saying I should, you know, kill one horse or the other. Um, trying to improve Bish. Fish says, kill a horse, any horse, right? Why? So let's go back, this position. Now I know it's long-winded, guys, right? But this is, this is growth. This is growth in chess, in action, live, before your very eyes. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's do this as a variation. Let's just try it, and this is what's great, you know? You can do this, and what's more, because I've got, you see this wreck thing down here? It's recording my moves, okay? So whatever I try out here, it's going to, I can come back to this later on, okay? So best thing here, obviously, you've got to recapture the knight. Then I'm imagining knight here. Oh no, knight g4, knight g4 is better, okay? Spoiler alert. Knight g4 now, hitting the queen. They've got a very isolated offside pawn here, okay? And a move like this, yeah, we're attacking the queen, we're attacking the bishop, queen's got to defend, queen's got to go back to e2, or h3. h3? Oh, I guess it still defends the bishop, hey? You know, that's something like this. Then we take here, then we mess up their pawns even more. And yeah, this is looking nice. So anyway, okay, so it said I should have taken a horse and improved my position. Now what I probably didn't do was <clears throat> calculate what happens if I take this, what's gonna happen? I do this, I do that, improve my knight, you know, I can mess up the point, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right, I, I probably didn't calculate, I was probably just thinking, this bishop isn't in a great position, um, why don't I improve it? I could have just traded it off as well. Another idea, anyway. So we do this, he takes there. And that's not great. What should he have done? Knight takes d5. Oh yeah, wow, look at that. I didn't even notice this. He has three attackers against two defenders on there. Huh, that's interesting. Right, now, so, Trying to improve the bishop. Fish says kill a horse, any horse. Why? Because look at the pawn on d5. Yeah? Two attackers only. Sorry, three attackers, isn't it? 3a, 3a, 2d. Okay? Three attackers, two defenders. I missed that. Completely missed it. And why? Actually, ah! Okay? And... Bishop to d6, blocks the queen's defense. See? Now, I, I, you know, I might have played the same kind of thing, I might have missed the same, same kind of thing in my next game, right? But at least I'm feeding new knowledge into my brain. Okay, now they take here, they should have taken the, um, yeah. Knight d5 is better, or queen g3. Getting off, okay. White gives away, uh, also missed 
the overwhelmed pawn on d5. And this is a free lesson, guys, that you can come back to at any time you like. Okay, recapture. Is that the best move? Of course it is. It's the only move. Yeah. Only move. Jolly good. Okay. And if it seems boring and laborious and, and drawn out, hey, you know, I said it was a simple method. I didn't say it was going to be easy. And I didn't say it was going to be interesting. But actually, I'm enjoying myself. So don't care what you say. Right, this is terrible, okay? Bishop f4 was a good move. Uh, well, bishop f4 was, was okay, h3 was okay. Um, yeah, h3 is the defensive move, bishop f4. You know, he, he needs to put stuff in the way of the evil clergy. And this just didn't do it, okay? Allows knight takes e4. It's not knight takes e4, it's knight e4. Okay. Huh? Allows knight takes e4. Okay, so the, okay. Right, so this is not this is not the right place for this, this comment. The point is here allows knight takes e4. Okay, now here's the thing. We saw that it's dropped from 7.2 to 2.1. Why? Well, let's go back. The better move, in fact, there's two better moves. The immediate bishop takes h2 was the thought, and I didn't even considerize that. Never even crossed my little furry mind. Okay? But even better than that, the best move, knight g4. And guess what? Guess what? This queen has to either take the knight or take the rook. Okay, because if say the queen just gently retreats, then we have bishop takes h2. King can't come here, so king has to go to h1. And then, wow, bishop g, oh no, bishop g3, or queen's threatening to come in, it's a forced mate in six, right? Forced mate in six. Wow, okay, and that's the difference. Okay, so the queen cannot vacate in this instance. Okay, so it's the same, you know, partly the same idea, right? It's the idea of a discovered attack against the queen. The queen's got to do something. The queen can't come here. All right, what if the queen comes here? Okay, still bishop takes h2. It doesn't really defend against anything. It's actually saying queen takes. But if, if king here? Knight f2 check? Oh, with the discovery on the queen. Oh my God, you see? And this is just an ordinary five minute old blitz game, right? But we're discovering stuff, we're learning stuff here, okay? That's why this move was not best. I'm still in a good position, but it's not a winning position. Okay, now here, the queen should actually have sacked herself off for the rook. She didn't, she ran away like a little weasel. <coughs> Uh, best move here, queen h4, brilliant, well done, yeah, good move, good move, very good move, best move on the board, uh, there's no option for x, I'm going to give it, I'm going to say brilliant move for that one, hey, it's, it's my study, so that, you know, and the rest is history, so, <clears throat> this is the point, um, I've just spent, what, an hour going through a five minute blitz game, that seems a bit absurd, right, I could have played another six games, or seven or eight games in that time. But if I'd have played the seven or eight games, I'd have been returning to my vomit. Okay? Here, I feel like a stronger player. Okay? So there you go, guys. This is the Gromit Method, part two, and part one is going to follow next. Okay? All right? If you want to take this on as a challenge, here's what I should, I would suggest that you do. Play one rapid game per day, only. Right? And then do this with that rapid game. Right, take a note of your rapid rating on day one of the challenge. Do that for 30 days, one game a day, and analyze it, and keep it right on a study, a leecher study, and then at the end of 30 days, let me know what happens, right? Now here's the point. Well, there's another point. There's so many good points, right? 
I now have a lesson. I have a lesson here. So, you know, I've got an option, right? If I sit here with my breakfast, like I do in the morning, I'll check, has Grandmaster Naroditsky posted another speedrun update? Having said that, he's just gone all the way back to 500, so I'm not gonna learn a huge amount from that. I could sit here while I'm having my bacon and my eggs, yeah? And I could say, I'm gonna learn myself a bit of Freddy Scotch, okay? Um, let's just review game one, okay? And why don't I go preview, you know? In fact, this isn't right because, you know, preview here is, is saying, it's actually testing me on what I did play rather than what I should, okay? So um, I'm not gonna do that. I'll probably change this one to um, normal analysis, let's say, right? Okay, and I can, I can go through this, okay? I can go through this and just read the, the comments. Okay, and here, so if knight takes here, right? This is the best move, second, second most common move, okay? Now it's not knight to f6, okay? I've actually even got the thing there to say what I should do, right? What I should do, fe, okay? Look at that, and I can play through this in just two or three minutes, right? Or five minutes, however long I want to take, I can play through this. Knight takes, um, you know, not, not great. So I could, you know, put that as red, right? Not great, right? That was best, for example. And it'll remember these lines as well, by the way. Okay, why? Well, there's tension between these pawns, right? The engine wants us to take the free stuff, etc., etc., etc. And I can play over this as many times as I like. And, you know, there is a point to returning to your vomit in order to recognize your vomit and don't eat it again. That's the point. Anyway, I've said my piece. If you've made it this far, you rule. Thank you for watching. Appreciate your support. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you soon.